if you sh shut the TV off, right? You know the kids, you're not watching any TV. Will your, will your kids run in the room and pound with you? Put them in the backyard. They will create something. You know why? Because inside of us is that desire to do something and never done. When you get into an environment that just locks in the same thing, the creativity leaves. All right, let's do it next time. I don't have every, I don't have a lot of slides every week. Tired of doing the same old thing. That's how we advertise it on the on the on the, on the website. Most believers. Are, are not in imminent danger of ruining their lives. They're facing a danger that's far greater, wasting. Now, if you ever want to know where I'm getting this from, which would be a good book for a man's ministry, I'm getting this It's a book, that's the author, Stephen Furtick, writes a book called Greater. That's, that's what I'm doing the whole seminar on, all week long. There's a book called Greater. What he does is he challenges you to, to understand what Jesus is trying to get at in John 14, 12. The works that you see me doing, greater works are you going to do. Now, either you believe Jesus is going to do greater works through you, or you don't believe it. But he said it. I didn't say it. Right? So, right. so, so, so here, what are the things that may hold me back from doing things greater? My age. I may have, I may be dis disabled. Um, if you're under church discipline, the person who's on the discipline either is crushed if they didn't do it yeah. Christ-like way, or they accept what they what's gone through. But then that period of what you tell yourself mm -hmm. that you're no good and you can't do anything, Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't do that. You know, you know that you know that woman that they threw down in the middle and caught in a, caught in adultery. Jesus wouldn't. Jesus himself wouldn't condemn her. But we we only go to that story. But he also wouldn't condemn the other people that set her up. You ever think about that? Because God's not in that kind of setting. He's trying to save everybody. He's trying to he's trying to, he's trying to heal, bring healing to uh, everybody. Tell about a time when you found yourself wishing you were accomplishing more in life. That really matters. That really makes a difference. Right? You, you can think of a time where you just you're going through and you say, "Man, I wish I could just really do something that that makes a difference. That really matters." Anybody think of a moment like that? We look back over our lives, man. If only I had done that, uh, I could have served God better, right? Um, and then, if so, what was that that you keep dwelling on? That's what I'm saying. That particular thought process is the Holy Spirit trying to shake you and shape you to the thing he wants. He has started with the agitation or the, the mindset to say, hmm, I don't, I don't want to keep on this treadmill. I don't want to keep doing this thing over. That's a sign of an anxiousness that God has placed in your heart so that when he gives you this call, you're going to go, this is going to go, that's it. That's why when he said to the disciples in the first verse of the 14th chapter of John, let not your hearts be troubled, he is assuming that there are troubled hearts. Yes. And it is the troubled hearts that he is preparing to do something greater. He comes to he comes a few verses later and says, greater works are you going to do than this? You thought that you were retired. You thought it was over. You thought it was just chilling. It is, but in that experience... God is still tugging. For God to do great things through you, you have to expect great things from Him. Right? For God to do great things through you, you have to expect great things from Him. Now that's just, oh, that, that thing that you that tugging at you, now you when you wake up, you got to expect that today, God's going to lead me to that great thing he's wanting. I'm, I'm expecting a great thing from God. So if I were to say, well, is it necessarily a bigger church? Or is it a greater influence? They quenched the flames of fire. And weakness was turned to strength. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. That's right there in the Bible, right? Yeah. For God to do great things through you, you got to expect great things from God. Right. Attempt great things for God. Here's the key points here. Great is beyond what you can do under your own. Great is more than what your wealth, or lack thereof, mm -hmm. can do for you. <laughs> when God's your partner, you don't have to do small plans. You can make big plans. He can do things beyond what you come up with. For the week, you would want to know, individually and as a church, something that has been on your mind, and you want God to take that thing over. Keeps it hidden from us because we'll be too overwhelmed and thinking we got to do all that work. So he doesn't show you everything up front. You know, when he tells Nehemiah, go build the wall, the wall, man, that's a lot of work because Sam Bell out there, all out there. But it's not just in there. The moment Nehemiah, Nehemiah decides to accept yeah. that call, then God provides. Mm -hmm. You're praying, but it seems your prayer is, is God letting Satan speed up stuff. Because the miracle is on the other side. Mm -hmm. So if Satan's coming after you, making your life worse each day, you keep praying. You ever prayed something and it keeps getting worse? <laughs> because, because it seems like my life gets better when I stop praying. Cause, cause, cause. I, just, I keep praying to God and it keeps getting worse, worse. That's what's happening. Israelites standing right there. Pharaoh's army coming, zooming at them. They can see the dust. All of a sudden, the, the sea opens up. Now you, you go back and read that story. I think it's Exodus 14. When Israel's going through on dry ground, they get to the other side, you and I would close the sea up right there, right? Because we safe. Uh -huh. Not God. Because Pharaoh's goal is to destroy you. He doesn't even recognize that there's a miracle. The sea is open up. He doesn't even recognize that, that, that there, there are these things. He's, all he sees is the church on the other side I got to destroy. I got to see your issue. He's focused on destroying you. But he doesn't see that God has opened him to come after you with a mighty force. And then in the middle of the ocean, then God's I'm in the middle of the sea. God tells Moses that. Oh, just to have up the whole army. He waited the whole army was right there in the middle. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And he said, all right. Yeah. Really now, what God said is something I want to encourage you tonight. What God said on the other. But God said, after yeah. night, you won't see your Boosh. The flood comes on, and guess what happens next morning? Bodies wash up on the ship. Mm. Yeah. The evidence yes. that God will cover for I'll you. close with this illustration. Um, that the gazelle can jump and leap. Yeah. Set, you know, yeah. It can leap something right. taller than itself. It can leap a barrier six, eight, ten feet. Mm. Right? So you go over here now to San Diego, down to the wild animal park, and they have gazelles there. Yes. And the the fence is like three mm -hmm. feet, four feet up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he can jump six to eight feet. Yes. So if your mind is like my mind, well, like guys can go free. They can just use their talent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just use what God gave them. They can jump the fence, right, and go. So, Mr. Zookeeper, how come the gazelle won't just won't just jump out? And he says, this is the answer. The fence, the, the fence that he can jump over is, is designed at a 45 degree angle. Okay? He can still jump it. Uh, yes. Yeah. But what they discovered about the gazelle is he will never jump a barrier where he can't see where he's going to land. So all he can do is just go up. He won't jump it. Because he can't see the other side. So he's not going to, that might be a cliff. <laughs> so he won't jump it. He stays in slavery. This is my little coin phrase of that. He stays in slavery for you and I to pay money to go look at him and see how cute he is because he can't, he won't jump that thing. He got the gift and talent to do it, but he won't jump because he can't see where he's going. There's so many Adventist churches that won't do greater things because we too, we won't, we have to see everything. And that's not what God's asking to do. We just, we, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Have you ever seen that? That we've never done that before. That we did all. It comes in all kind of ways. But what's holding us back is, is because we don't feel comfortable. But God has the blessings on the other side. And that's the only reason why He was taking Israel to the Promised Land. They never seen. It.
That generation never seen a promise. They got out there with nothing but desert, mm. snakes, sand, heat, quail. You know, that's all they could see. They couldn't see it. They came from seeing all of this beautiful stuff in Egypt. One of the wonders of the world. This, this city was way ahead of its time. Memphis, great cities come out of that. Beautiful, but they were enslaved. So some of us would much rather stay in the beautiful setting and comfort in slavery than to go and see nothing, but God's about to do something great. He wants us to get out so he can do something great. So tonight, we start praying all week long, God help me to see the greater thing you want, you want to do through me. And then the second point is, God, show our church something greater than what we've ever seen before. We've never seen it happen here before. 